Hi there. Today I'm continuing my look at the uh, Riocas of uh, Bodegas Muga. So here we have the 2016 Torre Muga. Um, just to recap on uh, Bodegas Muga, they're um, a family-owned winery um, with their uh, the winery actually in the town of Harrow in the, the station district there um, and they were founded in, in the 1930s they're still in the ownership of the same family um, although they have their winery in the town they, obviously their vineyards are in the villages surrounding Harrow um, mostly at the very northern end of the Rioja uh, producing area and mostly at quite high altitudes I mean some of their vineyards are up to 550 metres above sea level so those tend to be quite uh, relatively cool, the temperature moderated by altitude, and, and geared up to producing low yielding, high quality fruit. Um, I've said before the, the uh, approach of Bodegas Muga is, is quite to produce wines in quite a modern style, but yet in, with quite traditional winemaking. Torre Muga is probably the, the furthest they go towards making a, a really um, more modern style wine in that instead of long aging in large oak casks this has a short aging period I mean still 18 months but aging in small barrels and those barrels rather than being a combination of about 80% French and 20% American are 100% French and in particular Allier oak um, they also don't uh, talk about the wine having aged in their cellars subsequent to, to bottling. So, so the approach is very much that sort of uh, shorter period in uh, smaller oak and so um, closer oak contact um, to, to create the style of the wine. The, the blend is also slightly different in that they don't include um, ganacha in it which would soften the blend a little. So this is a blend of 75% Tempranillo supported by um, 15% of uh, Mausuelo and, and then another 10% of Graziano. Um, so slightly more structured varieties there. So this is a wine that um, I, th I think is the aim is to make a, um, a wine a little more akin to a modern Bordeaux in style, which will be more structured and will age um, for, for longer perhaps. Um, so let's have a look at the wine and let's, let's see what it, it shows us. First, first thing to say is that the colour is actually you know, very intense. I, I can't see through this. It's completely opaque. It's a, a deep ruby red to red, red black, red purple. The, 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 you know, there's quite a purple note to the rim, but the core is, as I say, very intense. And, and let's see what the aromas are showing us. The aromas are a combination of really sort of ripe plum fruit to, to mulberry. There's a, it's a lovely intensity of ripe red fruit, but overlaid with cedary notes. And that there are there are also sort of notes of particularly of chocolatey uh, chocolate, chocolate vanilla, um, maybe coffee notes in there, maybe some spicy notes, tiny touch of forest floor notes as well. Some development, but not a lot. So let's taste it, shall we? That's fine grained with concentrated licorice fruit. Lovely, lovely fresh acidity. Um, quite a bit of quite um, gripping cedary note almost getting to the, the, the point of view of being sort of drying and austere but there is enough richness there to um, just to stop that and, and give a more of a sort of a, a there's a chocolatey texture and a juicy richness to, to the, the finish there um, there's also quite a bit of, of warmth as well the alcohol is 14 and a half percent but it's warmth and ripeness and there's a sort of a rich prune plum note uh, to the finish there, sort of black plum um, and cedary spices as well, touches of sweet spice, a tiny touch of sort of cinnamon at the finish. Um, the wine lasts really well but the fruit is you know still quite dense and a little closed in. Um, structure is very fine and very grainy. It, it's actually quite full-bodied and rich um, 
not necessarily yet bursting and opulent, but it's, it's this combination of intense fruit, a lovely texture that is sort of um, grainy, it's velvety, heading on to chocolatiness. Um, and I, I guess the, the finish is, is closed up a little by the alcohol, but still has a lovely sort of red, juicy, lively mulberry fruit. It's, it, it, um, the alcohol is adding warmth to the finish, but it's not closing it down. It's allowing this um, vibrant fruit to continue showing. So um, the Tori Muga, um, I think you'll find this is, is, is about $95 a, a bottle is, a, is our average X tax price, so US dollars that is, um, on wine searcher. So it's, it's not a cheap wine, but actually it's a wine that um, seems to suggest that it would age for a, oof, a good 10, 15, probably 20 years because it has that structure and the freshness is so good and it's packed with fruit. So um, quite enjoyable now, but you know that little bit drying and, and almost certainly will open to show a lot more fruit um, as it develops. So yes, uh, Torimoga 2016, thank you for joining us and if you enjoyed it, do watch again. Bye now.